peekaboo. I can see through you. <laughs> Here's that Volkswagen motor. I'm making a video on because I pulled the motor out, but I got to edit the video together. Here's the back side of that. I mean, the connecting rod completely ventilated. I don't know what happened to the piston. It's nowhere to be found. I'm assuming it's part of the debris that's inside there. The, um, amazingly enough, I pulled out the spark plugs just out of curiosity. And amazingly enough, the one from that cylinder is not even damaged. That's very odd. Usually they let go going up. Very rarely they let go coming down. But check this out. This is the plug out of that hole. Looks absolutely fine. So what exactly happened? Who knows? Why it just threw that one rod? Who knows? Now, this is the old motor, obviously. The, um, the oil cooler goes right there. That's this piece. Now, the actual oil cooler assembly this silver part that you see here, that I replaced. I thought the housing and everything was going to be the same between the two motors, but apparently not. That motor that I got is from a Passat, and this is a Golf, so there is a difference. And I see this has got a sensor there, an oil pressure sensor. The other one doesn't have it on the housing. So I kind of didn't want to use it just in case, because uh, I don't know what the parameters are for the uh, computer readings on the other one. I mean, it could, it could read slightly different and could throw things off, so I just didn't want to do that. Now let me go over to the other motor and show you that thing. As you can see, I got a whole array of stuff that I disassembled from this motor. Oh, and I mentioned in the original short video about this bracket being broken. Now the brackets are actually different. I thought the other motor came with a good bracket, but it's different. But it broke this ear off this, but this actually isn't like an attachment ear or anything. It's basically just like a casting piece like this one has that just went around. So I'm not overly concerned about that. So I'm going to be reusing this bracket. I don't see an issue with that. I think everything's going to be fine. So let's walk over and let's check out the other motor. Like I said, there are some slight differences, but you can use it from what I've been told. Now, the one thing that really concerned me when I first got, got to the motor and started taking things off, I realized that this thing had a solenoid on the side of the block. So I'm like, what the heck is that solenoid for? Because that motor doesn't have it. It turns out it's for the oil pump. Now, with nothing hooked to it to control it, the oil pump goes to full pressure. I don't know why you need to control pressure. That never makes any sense to me. Like, what's the difference between this engine and a Golf engine? Like, why would you need to control oil pressure in the other one? Everything else is identical. And it's the same numbers on the motor. See that number there? Or actually lettering, CBU. There's apparently four different versions of this motor, CBU being one of them. So the motor that came out of the Golf over there is a CBU. The motor out of the Passat is a CBU. Same year engines too. So, but anyway, let me show you what I'm talking about. So I started stripping this one down. As you can see, I still have the oil cooler on it. And as you see, there's no provision for the oil pressure switch. Now, if you look, it's got the oil pressure switch on the side of the block. There's also an oil temperature switch or a sensor. Now, there is the solenoid. And like I said, the solenoid controls the oil pump. But apparently, with nothing attached to it, the oil pump is at full pressure. And like I said, why do you need to vary oil pressure? I, I, I don't know. Chrysler does it, too, on, on their 3.6. Uh, I'm sure others do it, too. But I'm, I'm not exactly sure why you need to actually vary the oil pressure. I mean, it's going to produce however much it's going to produce. You have your pressure regulator. Like, why do you need to control the pressure regulator? Don't you want it to just have the pressure regulator blow off at its normal preset PSI? I mean, because as far as I know, this has a regular oil pressure regulator built into the oil pump. So, but there's, other than that, there is no difference in these two motors. You know, everything's the same. It's got the knock sensors on the back there. Uh, this one was an automatic, so I don't know, maybe that makes some kind of a difference? I don't know. But supposedly you can interchange everything. So I'm going to start working on that. i got to finish stripping this one down. I'm actually getting ready to separate the motor and tranny on that one. And once I get that separated, then I'm just going to take that motor over and switch over to flywheels and stuff like that, or flex plate to flywheel, and 
then get that one attached and have it sitting on the my setup here so I could transfer everything over like I need to. The water outlet housings, they appear to be the same. This water, this water pipe appears to be the same. The thermostat housing appears to be the same. The water pump appears to be the same. Everything appears to be the same. So, and like I said here, you see the CBU on this motor. So, I don't know. I guess we're going to find out. We were told by multiple sources that yes, you can use the motor. It, it does work fine. There's no issues. You just leave the solenoid on there because you don't want to have an oil leak, obviously. And this one, if you look at the block, I actually don't even see a provision for where it would have gone. Like usually they would leave like a boss on the block. And this one, there's not even a boss on the block. So, I don't know, just strange. But they're guaranteeing me that it's gonna work. So, I guess we're gonna find out. All right, if you get anything out of my videos, hit that like button. Please subscribe. Have a great day. Keep wrenching.